Hello everyone's everyone's I am here for my review of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City season 1 episode 3. If you're new to my channel welcome if you're returning you one of my peoples welcome back. Now y'all I usually try to go and do my reviews the day after that the show has come out but I seen some people doing episode 3 and I was like hold up did it come on early but they had like a new uh, the um, episode 3 up on their website and I was like okay I'm gonna go ahead and do it now because Tuesday I'm gonna have to get some dinner work done and I don't know how I'm gonna be feeling a few days after that so let's go ahead and get this over with. So we gonna start off with Whitney. She wants to throw a party and we go. they go to this antique store. My first thought was this does not look like a place where you would have a party. I'm like, are you sure this is where you want to go? But apparently, you know, you stay a little cold and it was like a little speakeasy in the back. Like y'all know back in the day during Prohibition, it was illegal to sell and manufacture alcoholic beverages. So people was sneaking around and doing it, like having secret like rooms behind like regular stores. So now I guess you get the experience of being back doing Prohibition, but it's legal for you to drink, but you just having the experience of that. I was like, okay, cool. That seems nice. Because like the dude was like, you know, this was a dry county or something like that. And she was like, yeah. I guess that was like the little cold or whatever. It was cute or whatever. I was like, okay, I understand that. This a little cute little party that she's trying to have going on. I was like, the the, the antique part of the, um, the store was really, really small. But like, you going to the back, it's not going to bars. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I was like, okay, all right. I see it. I see what's going on. Let's move over to Jen. Like, I have a few questions about Jen, like, why does she always have on these sandal heels when it is cold outside? Like, ma'am, you don't have a pair of boots or a pair of booties? Because it don't even get that cold here in Houston, but I still got me a pair of boots and, like, two pairs of booties. Because, one, because they cute. And, two, like, sometimes when it is, like, a little cold, it ain't freezing cold, but, you know, I still want to have something on my feet. But she, like, almost barefoot. Walking out with these heels and I'm like, okay, this this is Jen. This is how she dresses. Now, Heather, she is still in a shower for five of her workers. Like, five out of the 20 workers are pregnant. So, she wants to throw, like, a little baby shower for them. And, like, the guests will bring baby pictures. And the look on Jen's face was like, on Jen's face was like, I have to bring a baby picture of myself. And it's like, yes, everybody got to bring a baby picture. And I was like, this is going to be... A sight to see because it looks like just about everybody on here has had some type of work done and and it shows like Whitney she seems like she is the only one that hasn't had work Jen looks like she didn't had work what's homegirl's name Mary looks like she didn't had work Lisa Meredith looked like they didn't have some type of work. Hella looked like she didn't have some type of work. So, yeah, I was like, I want to see what you look like originally. But anyways, Heather going, is going on and talking about how she didn't marry for love. The only reason she married her ex was because he was a Mormon man. Never loved a man or, un, or none of that stuff, but yet was resentful for him at him because he wanted a divorce. I was like, you didn't love the man, but I guess... You know, that she thought that was her job is, you know, marry a Mormon man, have Mormon children, bring them up in a Mormon church. And all, that all came crashing down when he wanted a divorce. And I guess she feels like a failure because, like, she is, like, the first person in her family who has gotten a divorce. Like, not only did you get a divorce from this Mormon man, but this filthy rich Mormon man. They didn't say that in the show, but I kind of, that's where I was going with it. Yeah. So, we're going to move back over to Jen. She didn't went over to Lisa's house. I believe this is Lisa. Maybe it was Meredith. You know I can't get these two together. I'm wanting to say it's Meredith's house. Yeah, no, yeah, it's Meredith's house. So, Jen gets there. Still wearing these Santa heels. I'm like, does she, have, does she not have regular clothes? Does she not have a pair of jeans and some boots? Does she always have to have a fur... A doggone a dress on and some doggone sandal heels. Girl, your free your shoe your toes are gonna get frostbitten. But anyways, she's sitting there talking about something gonna have them a good old time. They're gonna be kicking their legs and she proceeds to doggone it. 
One, she up her kicking her legs while she on Jen's couch while Brooks was like almost in in like a earshot of all of her business downstairs. She over there kicking up her legs and he's looking like, ma'am, don't nobody want to see that, especially me. And then she got her feet all on this woman's couch. I'm like, why? why you, your feet was just outside. These shoes that are on your feet was just outside in the snow walking. Why are they now on this woman's couch? Why are your legs up in the air? Yes, she was turning sideways and Brooks didn't get a, a full glimpse of all your goodies downstairs. But man, what are you doing? What are we doing? I'm just looking like... I was so like triggered by that. Cause that's one thing I don't like. I don't like when people put their feet on their shoes on the couch or on the bed. I don't like it when you are just came from outside and then you go sit on the bed. No, you got that outside and you bringing it on the bed. That just me. I y'all know. When something is irritating me or creeping me out and scaring me, I got to go to this right shoulder and just grab it. And I'm like, ma'am, what are we doing? Please stop. Please. Anyways, I'm going to move over to Lisa. She taking her son driving. She more stressed out than him. Now, I know what it feels like to be stressed out. If the son is not she is. He's like, oh my goodness, break. Stop. You see that curl? Or he's like, I see what is going on. I'm trying to drive. I was with my brother driving i had to be like 15 or 16 years old and he was letting me drive and he to me was the worst teacher because like he's yelling i'm trying to like focus on what i'm doing and some dudes come behind us and he's like get out of the car i'm scared because i'm thinking he gonna chase after the end but no he just wants me to get out of the car i'm like i just need to focus and not have you doggone yelling at me at this moment you stressing me out and then one time, it's nighttime. He like, hey, let's go. I'm like, come on, get your shoes on. We finna go somewhere. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm about to get into the passenger seat. He's like, no, you get in the driver's seat. I'm who? I'm doing what? I'm 15, 6 years old. I ain't drove. I haven't driven at night yet. And you want me to drive at night? And I don't even know where we're going, sir. What is wrong with you? But anyways. Her son, he did good. He wasn't as stressed out as she was. She was so stressed out. She needed her a Diet Coke with lemonade when they got to the convenience store. He's like, you know, I really don't want you, you know, I don't want to do this with you anymore. Because you finna have a heart attack over here, mama. I was cool. Baby brother in the back, he was cool. You was the one that was over here stressing out. Y'all yeah, have a question. Mary, not so much a question as a statement. Mary, she is always going on. Oh, this is Dolce and Gabbana. This is Valentino. This is Balenciago. She going on and on and on about what she got on, but she ain't talking about getting something done to this head. Like, you need a new wig or a weave. I know there's probably not the best weaveologist in, you know, Salt Lake City, Utah, but girl, you can go to LA and you can go to Atlanta. You can go to New York. Go there. Go go to the best weaveologist where you're going to be paying a couple thousand dollars, which I wouldn't do, but since you got money, you always talk about what you what you got on, you should be doing something about your head. Now, I can say this because I'm not making the money that Mary has. And I don't have the money that Mary has. I do my own hair, which I got, you know, I'm keeping it up for two weeks. I'm going to take it down Friday. That ain't the point. I ain't going to talk about her hair because I'm not on, I got, you know, a couple of hundred subscribers. I'm not on TV. You're on TV bragging about what you got. And how much, um, what designers you got, but your wig over here looking like this. I'm like, no, ma'am, go to Atlanta, LA, New York, where you need to go, get you a good weaveologist. You got money like that? Have them come there, pick out you some good human hair, and sew it in and make it look right. Because what you got on your head right now is not working for me, boo boo. It's just not. But she is dealing with, you know, her son, who was a teenager, who no longer wants to hang around with mama no more. You know, when he was little, he always wanted to be with mom. And they was traveling to and fro. But now he got him a girlfriend. And he ain't trying to be around mama no more. He's trying to be around a girlfriend. And then on top of that, she feels like she's growing apart from her grandhusband. Now, this is what Jamie, that um, 
Jamie that's me said I did not make up the term grand husband Jamie that's me made up grand husband and I thought it was hilarious so I'm gonna give her credit when she called this man her grand husband but you know her and the husband that used to be her granddaddy they kind of drifting apart and then to sprinkle a little more drama into the family you know what's going on with the family it seemed like Mama wanted to marry Granddaddy as well, and and Mama wanted to take over the church. I'm like, now I I did hear some wordies on when I was looking at other people's videos and looking at the comments that Grandma did not will this girl to her husband because one you can't do that. That I know that, but I didn't bring that up. But it seemed like Mary had a husband who didn't have a didn't have a lot of money, and she kind of like you know shimmied over there to you know Granddaddy, and you know. They, and then they end up getting together. Either way, I still think it's messed up because this man was your granddaddy. I don't care if he was just married to your grandma for two years. This was your grandma's husband. And now he is your husband. And y'all been together for 20 years. And y'all got a child together. It's just messed up. And then you talking about some your mama wanted to get with him. Like mama wanted to get with her stepdaddy. And she wanted to church. Which side note. I don't know how it go at Mary's church, but at my church, you just don't be like, okay, this person going to be the pastor there, but going to be like, okay, no, the church got to get together and vote and be like, we we need a new pastor, you know, the old pastor, he passed away or he got a job somewhere else. We go to audition some pastors and then we going to vote if this pastor is going to be here. I don't know how Mary finagled some things and she became pastor, but she is now. I guess Mama was mad because she didn't be wasn't able to become pastor and get to be you know get with you know Granddaddy. So Mama left the church and took half the congregation with her. So Mary, they still got a good sized congregation. It's just like it seemed like it's a lot of drama and a lot of mess going over there at you know Mary and her people's house. Now. Brooks tells Meredith that he and her sister they was they was uncomfortable with his behavior. He did not need to see all her downstairs business. That is what he did need to do, and he doesn't think it's a good idea for them to have a little sleepover. Mm -mm. She don't need to be over here when she cutting up and acting like that. So now Meredith got to tell um, Jen that it's not gonna be a sleepover. She not gonna take that well. Now Brooke, he said he didn't took time out for school because he needed to be there for his mom, but. I was like, yeah, I can understand that. Your mama and your daddy getting divorced, so you want to be there for your mama. But you also want to be on this TV show and promote your um, new clothing line, which I'm not mad about. If my mama was, if I got a business that I'm starting it, and my mama's finna gonna be on, is about to be on a TV show, on a reality TV show, you best believe I'm gonna be on there. And my mom's gonna be like, yeah, my daughter, she got this, that, and the third going on. Oh, you best believe I'm gonna be promoting my stuff on this show. Free for, for Free um, promotion? Oh, yes. I would. And I ain't mad at Brooks about that. But Jen is mad that Mary is... Wait a minute. She mad that uh, Mary is invited to Whitney's party. Because she still heard what she said about her aunt. Now, let's get this straight. She didn't say anything about your aunt. She said that the, you and your crew smelled like hospital. She wasn't, yeah, well, let me take that back. She did say in her confessionals that, you know, your aunt's need to have lost weight or she wouldn't have been losing, you know, having her legs amputated. That was messed up, and I said that. But she didn't, to you, say anything about the aunt. It was that y'all smell like hospital because you came from seeing your aunt. Now, was it like, was you and your whole crew there, or was it that you smell like hospital and it jumped on your crew and y'all all end up smelling like hospital? Either way, she's still mad about this. But Whitney, she said she liked Mary because Mary invited her and her dad and Meredith to her church. She got to see Meredith, no, not Meredith, she got to see Mary preach. And she was appreciative of how the church welcomed her dad, even though what he's been going through. And Mary prayed and did all that other stuff. But she mad because oh so Meredith was out here going to church with Mary but she couldn't go to the sleepover with me well it was more of Brooks that convinced her not to go to the sleepover not so much as like she did it because of Mary Mary ain't nothing to do with that sleepover it was your fault because you was over here not gonna kicking up your legs and showing almost all your downstairs business that was the problem 
But she on this whole, if you're going to be friends with Mary, then you can't be friends with me. Now, that is one thing I do not like and I will not stand for. You're not going to sit here and tell me who I can and can't be friends with. Unless this person was ever physically hurting people out in this world, helpless people, and just doing all kinds of wrong, I'm going to be friends with them. You and Mary had this stuff because she said you smell like hospital. Well, she's traumatized by hospital, hospital smells because... When she was over here, she got to go to Glenn's move, and she had, you know, a bad, um, I don't want to say a box surgery. She was in the hospital for a while, so the smell of hospital takes her back to that moment, and she don't want to go there no more. You just, it seemed like you putting 20 on 10. We, we on episode 3, and we still talking about this, and I'm getting upset about this. So, we at this prohibition party that Whitney is throwing. Not prohibition, like a speakeasy party. I don't know what strippers had to do with the 1920s. She should have just been like, I wanted to have a party with strippers and left it at that. We didn't have to have it a roaring 20s party because strippers, that my knowledge, were not there doing all these things out there in the 1920s. They may have. I wasn't there. I don't know. But it should have been like, I want to have a stripper party. This is what I want to do. If y'all want to come, y'all can come. I don't know why we need to dress up in costume to go see the strippers, but hey. But like I said, Jen is getting on my nerve because we on episode three and we still talking about this. But like she wasn't trying to, well, she did in her confessional try to dog your auntie, but she wasn't dogging your auntie in this particular setting. She just, the hospital smells trigger her. Yes, she could have said it in a more sensitive way because, you know, you know, granddaddy husband, you know, he up her in age and you supposed to be a pastor. So what do you like? Not go visit people in the hospital when they sick. Because you're supposed to, like, that's one of the things parents are supposed to do. But anyways, y'all, that was the gist. If I left me think out, bomb me some comment below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. It's free all day, every day, free 99. Make sure your notifications are on. So when my beautiful face puts up a video, you can click on it. You can like it. You can share it with your people. And you can come over and be one of my peoples. If you're already one of my peoples, oh, welcome back. Y'all don't know what to do. Tell your people to tell their people to come over and be one of my peoples by clicking that icon above. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.